you know, I hardly ever read the paper, and um, I had just done my last post on the bystander effect, and I came into work one uh, on break, and I just happened to pick up this paper, and uh, a column from George Will is in there. It's entitled uh, Charity and Politics. Charity and Politics. And the basic gist of the article is that the liberals, who think it's government's job to uh, take care of the ills of society, give less because of exactly what I talked about, the diffusion of responsibility. They think that government's going to take care of it. Conservatives, who think that it, it is individuals' responsibility to take care of the ills and the, and the poor and the problems within their community, they give more because they feel they feel the responsibility more a, a, as an institution. They believe that it's individuals and, and private charity that should do this work. And uh, fundamentally, liberals believe that it's government that should do this. So he goes through a few statistics right here. It says, although liberal families' incomes average 6% higher than those of conservative families, conservative-headed households give, on average, 30% more to charity than the average liberal-headed household. So the liberals um, out-earn the conservatives by 6%, but the conservatives out-give the liberals by 30%, 1600 per year versus 1227. Conservatives also donate more time and give more blood. Residents of the states that voted for John Kerry in 04 gave smaller percentages of their incomes to charity than did residents of states that voted for George Bush. Bush carried 24 out of the 25 states where chari charitable giving was above average. When surveyed, people who reject the idea that, quote, government has a responsibility to reduce income inequality. Okay, people that reject the idea that it's government's responsibility to reduce income inequality give an average of four times more than people who accept that proposition when responding to the same question. And it goes on. But, you know, we see this in Barack Obama. Barack Obama has just released his tax returns, and until he began his run-up to the presidential bid, he was given, you know, four-tenths of a percent to charity. And Al Gore, says here, gave 2%, no, I'm sorry, 0.2% of his family income, one-seventh of the average for donating households. But Gore must have think he was doing his job because he quote-unquote gave at the office by using public office to give other people's money to government programs. He was being charitable, charitable as liberals seem to understand that word. And so this is proof positive of what I'm talking about. When you say it's government is going to take care of things or people that believe government should take care of things, they give less. And so the point of this article is that the people that need that charity actually wind up less better off. While conservatives tend to regard giving as a personal rather than governmental responsibility, some liberals consider private charity a retrograde phenomenon, a poor palliative for an inadequate welfare state, and a distraction from achieving adequacy by force by increasing taxes. If support for a policy that does not exist substitutes for private charity, the needy are left worse off than before. So in other words, if you're supporting increasing government programs and because of that you think that eventually they'll be ena enacted and, and because of that you don't give as much, well until they're enacted, and even after they are, but I'll get that to that in a minute, but until they're enacted, the poor are getting less than they would. And this doesn't even account for the fact that once you do give that money to the government, it's not the most effective way to help people. Let's say you have $200,000 that's going to go to charity. And you send that to the government. Well, who's going to handle $200,000 for the government? Can't just sit there and then be redistributed back out. Somebody's got to be paid to take care of that. 
So you pay somebody forty thousand dollars a year to sit up in an office and make decisions and write out checks and and pay them gas money to drive back and forth to work, pay them a salary, pay the light bill at the building where they work, pay for them to have a computer and internet service and anything, everything else. So let's say you spent fifty thousand dollars to have that money handled. Well, the amount of money that actually is going to wind up in the hands of a poor person automatically is 25% less. It's $150,000 at the max. And that's if everything's kept in tip-top shape. Then that doesn't even count for the inducement uh, of the population to commit fraud against the government to receive the benefit or the government's propensity to give the money to people that don't really need it or the propensity of the government to be inefficient and wasteful on their side of the spending, in other words, on the salaries, on the cars, on the light bill, they're inefficient in that manner. And so your money is watered down even if even if you assume that giving through government is the right way to help people. Even if you have a lot of help, quote unquote, help in place, it doesn't wind up being the most effective manner because you lose a lot of the money along the way. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. People that think it's the government's responsibility don't help people out, and people wind up worse than if you didn't have any government help in the first place. And then once you do get the government programs in, in place, they waste money that would have gone to these individuals had it been given directly or through much through means that have much smaller overhead, like a, like a small church group, for example, that has a small volunteer committee that gets together and, and distributes money from their church members, or a small group charity, or community charity, even the larger charity charities. They have an incentive to make sure the money gets to the people that it's designated for, rather than wastefully spent on bureaucrats and everything else. So this is a prime example in the mainstream media, a uh, well-known author talking about exactly what I was talking about the other day, and that is the bystander effect. Say government's going to do something, people in the community and everyday people do less. And it, it's a tragedy because the ones that say they're the most, the ones that parade around pretending like they care and they're going to tax you to help people out are actually the ones that care the least and that wind up being worse off for the poor than the ones that don't go around parading about and bragging about it in the first place.